Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. So this is going to be a small video where we are going to look into filters inside Spring. Now, if you have been following this particular playlist, then we have already had a glimpse of what exactly is filter. So if you remember when we were looking into interceptors, we have seen what exactly are filters and where they fit into. Now in this video, we are going to have a little bit in-depth knowledge of filters. And why we are looking into filters at this point of time? Because we are gradually moving towards learning Spring security. And filters play very very important part in Spring security. So let's quickly see what exactly are filter and how we can implement that inside Spring Boot. So let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Right, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. So filters inside Spring. Now first we will look into what exactly are filters. Then we will understand what is mean by filter chain. So when we look into spring security, you will see this particular term filter chain again and again. So we will see what exactly it is. Then we will see how we can create our custom filter, right? We will implement it inside one of the project and we will just have a quick glimpse of how the filter will look inside spring security, right? So that is basically the quick agenda and we will try to cover it quickly. Now filters we have already seen in brief in this particular playlist. So if you remember, if you go to this particular playlist and here you will have this particular video, right? Spring Boot Interceptor. So as a part of this particular video, we have already had a glimpse of what exactly is filters and where it fits into and we have already compared it to interceptor. So how it is different from interceptor that we have already seen, right? So now in this video, we will understand filters and keeping spring security in mind, right? Because we want to learn that that is an important feature that spring provides you, right? Now when we say filters, consider filters as kind of a gatekeeper of your application, right? And for each request, they will validate the request, for example, right? Or perform some kind of operation on that particular request, right? So that is basically the job of filter. For example, another famous example would be you go to airport, right? You want to fly somewhere and you go to airport. Now there will be multiple checks that will be happening. Multiple security gates will be there, right? So you can relate to those gates as your filter, right? Now let's go to this canvas and try to understand this particular stuff first, right? So here, let's say you have a Spring Boot application, right? So from this part to this part, let's say this is basically the application, right? And these are your clients. Let's say you are hitting some request with your browser from your browser or your postman, right? You are hitting some request to your service, right? Now your service will be deployed somewhere on the server. So if you are talking about Spring Boot, you will get multiple embedded servers, right? For example, be it Tomcat, be it Jetty or be it Undertow, right? So there are multiple options you have, you deploy it on somewhere. Your request will first go to your server, right? Now Java have a mechanism to handle all your requests and responses, right? What is that mechanism? That is basically servlet API, right? So that is basically the legacy mechanism inside Java E to handle your requests and responses, right? So your request will be handled by this guy, right? And when it comes to your Spring Boot application, there is something called as dispatcher servlet, which is basically a abstraction of your servlet API, which is provided by your spring application, right? So this dispatcher servlet sits inside your spring core, right? Which is kind of an abstraction on your servlet API, right? So internally that guy is using servlet API itself, but everything is abstract for us. We don't have visibility of anything because, because it's a framework, right? It's automated stuff. Everything is automated, right? We just need to import libraries like Spring Web and it will handle stuff for us, right? But internally these things are happening, right? Now after your dispatcher servlet, this guy will transfer the request to your control, right? In between you will have this stuff, right? What is this guy? This guy is basically your interceptor, which we have already seen in the last video, right? This guy will have pre-handle, post-handle after completion. All these things we have seen in the detail already. If you have not seen it yet, I will recommend you to go ahead and check that particular video, right? This particular video over here. Where is that? Spring Boot Interceptor, right? So just go ahead and check it out. So your interceptor comes after your dispatcher servlet, which is a part of your Spring application, your Spring Core, your Spring Framework, right? But when it comes to your filter, filter is part of your servlet API. The filter is basically a legacy interface, which is a part of your servlet API, right? So you can import that by using javax.servlet.filter, something like that, right? Now this will clarify the difference between your filter and your intercept. So even before your request is going inside your Spring Core, filter will handle that request for you. And mostly filter will perform operations such as performing login or performing authentication, right? Which we are going to look into inside Spring Security. So that is a major use case of your 
filters right your filter will have your authentication and stuff so that we will see when we look into spring security but just keep in mind that your filter will land over here somewhere over here when you visualize it right now let's try to expand it right so for example this is basically your application postman or whatever let's say whatever browser right now this is your application now this is basically your dispatcher servlet before that a filter will be there right so let's say this particular area over here have your filters right now this is your client your client will send the request to your server it will land inside your servlet api and it will go to your dispatcher servlet and the same flow that we have seen right but here before that let's say we add a filter for example here i add a filter let's say i want to do logging when you send the request your request will first go to this particular logging filter then your request will be transferred to this particular dispatcher servlet right and whatever operation we are going to perform inside this filter will be executed first right be it your logging be it your authentication authorization blah 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 whatever you want to do you can do it over here so that is basically the role of filters over here so here if you see this is a layer of filters now let's say if you want to define the filters then it is a component inside your java which processes http request and responses for you even before the request reaches to your dispatcher servlet inside spring right so that is basically filter right so we have understood what exactly is filter then let's see what is filter chain right so filter chain is nothing but the chain of a filter right so what will happen over here we will have multiple filters right for example we will have authentication filter then we can have another filter let's say filter let's say filter 3 over here but now what will happen your request will first go to the first filter inside your filter chain after that your request will not go to dispatcher servlet rather than your request will now go to the next filter right and that filter will filter out stuff for you after that the request go to next filter right then this filter will do its job and after that whatever is the last filter inside your filter chain that particular filter will transfer the request to your dispatcher servlet inside your spring boot application this is basically the filter chain right so when i say filter chain filter chain is nothing but the chain of your filter which are running in sequential manner right logging filter first then authentication then filter 3 then filter 4 filter n and then last filter will call your dispatcher servlet right so that is basically your filter chain right it's just that when i say filter chain you should be able to imagine a chain of filters like this so that's why i'm highlighting it over here right that is basically the filter chain after that let's see the implementation of a custom filter so what we can do over here let's try to implement this logging filter inside our one of the application right so let's jump into the code now so this is basically weather service that we have already seen so this is basically the same application that we have seen while we were looking into cache right? so we have made use of cacheable cache put and all these cache related annotations we have this enable caching configuration over here right here in the controller we have few apis for example get weather add weather get all weather so all these things we have already seen so i'm not going into the detail of this particular application now rather what we will do now this is basically the spring service right this is spring boot application for us what we want we want to implement a filter so what i can do i can just create one package over here saying filters and let's try to implement a logging filter now right logging filter so let's say this is basically a plain java class now and what we will do now we need to implement this class with filter now if you see over here it is coming from jakarta.servlet right jakarta.servlet so if i go inside it it's a it's coming from your servlet package so as we have seen it is a part of your servlet api it is coming from your servlet api itself right so let's go back over here now now if you carefully observe over here it have this particular method which is your do filter now we need to provide the implementation of that over here so what i will do i will just say implement methods right so here i will implement this particular do filter method right apart from that what i will do i will just convert this particular class to component so that a bean will be created of this particular logging filter right and if you observe we will have multiple parameters to this do filter method which is first is servlet request then your response then you will have filter chain as well right so that you will know that what other filters are there inside the filter chain now what we will do we will just simply print the request url over here right so what i will say request url 
and we will just print it over here right now we will first need to convert this servlet request servlet request to http servlet request right so what i will do i will just convert this servlet request to http servlet request so that we can get the http related data from this particular object right how i am doing that i am just doing the casting over here now what i can do i can do http servlet request dot get request URI. So there is this get request URI method inside this particular HTTP servlet request object. And after that, what we can do now we are printing stuff. Now at this point of time, what we want to do, we want to either proceed to next filter inside filter chain, or we want to call our dispatcher servlet. Right? So in order to achieve that, what we can do, we can say so we have object of filter chain over here, right? This filter chain object. So what we can do, we can say filter chain dot do filter, right? So we will say do filter and we will pass the request and response, right? So request and servlet response. And that's it. Now this will call the method inside your filter chain. One of the implementation will be invoked application filter chain perhaps. And your request will either be passed to next filter or your dispatcher servlet, right? So your job is done over here. So that is basically a simple logging filter that we have implemented over here. Now what I will do, I will just start this particular application. Let's see what happens, right? So here our application is started and let me just bring up my postman real quick. There we go. And, and we have this particular add weather API already open for us. So what I will do, I will just hit this API and what we should see, we should see this particular request. We should see this particular request URL printed on the console, which we are seeing over here. So this request URL is printed over here. And this particular API is also printed, which is our request URI, right? So this particular weather is basically our URI, which is coming from the postman, which we have passed over here inside our request body, right? So let me maximize it. If you are not able to see, this is basically the weather, right? This is basically the request URI that we are passing. So that is something which is being printed over here. So that is how you can simply implement a filter. And what you can do, you can just perform some kind of operation. Uh, for example, we are doing logging over here and then call the next filter. And that is how you can simply implement filter inside your Spring Boot application, right? Now Spring Boot already will provide the filters for us. We just need to use that, right? For example, here we are creating this. This is basically a custom filter that we are creating, right? But Spring Boot will already have implementation of your authentication filter. For example, there is a basic authentication filter inside Spring Boot. So let's quickly have a glimpse of that particular filter. So what I will do, I will just type in basic authentication filter, right? And I will just say GitHub, right? So it should give me that particular class. So this is basically basic authentication filter inside your Spring application. So if you see over here, if I scroll down, this is basically the filter. Now, if you see over here, we have similar kind of method over here, which is do filter. And this guy is doing its all username and password authentication stuff over here. This is pretty similar to what we have implemented in logging filter. So here we are just logging our request. Here this guy is doing basic authentication, right? And here if you go over here and try to look into this once per request filter, let me just go over here. Let me see if I can find the implementation of that. Perhaps what I can do, I can just say GitHub and let's see if we are getting that. So here, we have the implementation of that now and if you can see that this is abstract class which is again implementing a filter now this is the same filter that we have used over here right so this is basically a layer of abstraction on top of this filter that is basically used by this basic authentication filter right basic authentication filter is extending once per request filter and once per request filter is implementing our same interface which is filter that we have used over here and this guy will now implement the method do filter that we have implemented over here right so again same stuff is happening just that just that we are just logging in and this guy is performing the authentication right now this is something which we are going to understand in depth when we look into spring security and understanding filter is basically an important part in understanding filters of your Spring security, right? So that's why that is the main purpose of covering filters inside Spring in this particular video, right? So we have implemented a custom filter, which is basically a logging filter that we have implemented this guy over here. And we just had a glimpse of a basic authentication filter, which is basically a filter inside your 
Spring Framework, right? Spring Security Web Authentication. So if you see the path over here, it is inside Spring Security. So that is basically it for this particular video. So we have seen what are filters. We have seen what is filter chain. We have seen the implementation of custom filter and we have just had a glimpse of how your Spring Security filter or basic authentication filter looks. And we were able to relate this particular implementation that we have did inside logging filter to the implementation that they have inside basic authentication filter, right? So you don't need to understand all these things now. We will just cover these things in detail when we actually look into Spring Security. So that is basically the agenda that we have covered in this video. So if you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to Code Snippet. Share this video with your friends so that they have idea about what are filters inside Spring and how we can use that inside your Spring Security, right? That's it for this video. See you in the next video.